Whichever path contains mature themes, adult language, and situations that some may find unsettling, listener discretion is advised. Last time you were with us, you were introduced to Rico, the White Death. A proud cat, he stalks the hunting ground of the garage daily. Nothing escapes him, save for the times his brother Otter interrupts his hunting with incessant barking and demands to play. Their owners, Alana and Thomas, are wonderful people, if completely inept at hunting. Their lives together were easy, and Rico had peace in his routine, until the day strange men came to his home. The pale men menaced his people, and while Tomas successfully drove them away with the help of Otter, Rico witnessed a third man tie a mysterious bobble onto a tree in the backyard. Later that night, an intruder forced its way into their home. A rat. But unlike any rodent Rico had ever toyed with, this one was no easy prey. Standing on its hind legs, the foul creature wielded a bone knife and fought Rico with more ferocity than anything ever had before. After being stabbed and bit by the monstrous intruder, Rico retreated into the kitchen, pursued by the monster. It was only the surprise ferocity of Otter that spared Rico more pain as the massive Rottweiler snatched up the creature in his jaws, biting the rat in two. Proud of his brother, Rico tasted their prize, only to be overcome with a strange sensation and understanding. As Tomas and Alana made their way through the dark of the house, Rico could now comprehend all of their words. He was aware the meat he had eaten had given him that understanding. With the people in his house closing in on the kitchen, he had a choice. Save some of this meat to give to his brother Otter, so he too could share in this knowledge. Or let them take the foul corpse away. This choice needed to be made immediately, and you helped him do it. And so, Whichever Path presents Good Boys, Episode 2. Have some. What the fuck? Oh. What is it? Uh, don't come in here. The boys killed something. Otter, Otter, come! Leave it! Oh. Wait, Rico! Drop it! Rico's neck throbs as he dodges Domas and makes his way through the pet door and into the garage. The dog circles and barks around Domas, giving Rico another five seconds. Otter is a good boy. Domas will be distracted by the other half of the rat and a barking dog. Rico can hide this piece. He drops the rat's head and front quarters behind a chest freezer. Otter. Rico's ear and neck are wet with blood. It's both his and the intruder's. He goes to clean himself, but the pain in his neck is sharp. He needs to Otter. rest. Leave it. Oh, there is space God. by the workbench, but the rat snuck in over there. Hang back. Hiding out oh, here is no I'll good. Oh my God. Rico looks back at the it's door. All over the floor. His people are Otter, talking. Come here. Oh, he's okay. Where's Rico? Tomas, was Rico hurt? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, he ran into the garage before I could look. Alana comes into the garage, the light from the kitchen burning through the shadows. Her hand goes to the switch, and Rico blinks in time to not be blinded. All the extra light and the sound of Alana being scared cause him to shake. He pees on the floor. Oh, baby! Oh, no! Tomas, he's bleeding! Oh, Rico, what happened? Tomas, get me a towel. Uh, I'll be right there. Alana has the towel in her hand. She talks quietly and sweetly at Rico. He knows okay, she's trying to make honey. him feel better, to stand still. 
but the towel in her hand means only two things, a bath or a ride in the box. The box that brings Rico to the smelly place. The place where they hold him down, put their steel claws into his backside, and then send him back home. He stands up to run, but the pain makes it impossible to get away from Alana. She wraps him up in a cocoon. He can't escape. He cries his protest. She doesn't relent. We gotta get to the vet. All right. Um, I'm not done cleaning up. Just throw out the thing they caught and let's get in the car. What did they kill? I don't know. I would say a rat, but the tail and back were too big. I thought a little possum, but the fur is brown. It's big. I worried Otterate the other half. Oh, God. Should we have brought him, too? No, I think he'll be fine. We'll ask when we get there, though. If we have to, I'll leave you with Rico, and I'll go get him. They are worried for Rico and Otter both, and now it's clear for the first time. They are bringing him to the smelly place, the fear place. But it's not to hurt Rico. They want to help. He cries softly in Alana's arms. He wants to say he wants to go home. She touches his forehead. He licks her fingers. Inside the smelly place, they race him out back. He hears the sick dogs and cats. There's a shriek of a bird as he's brought into a bright room with a metal table. They try to hold him down, hey. and as gentle as they are, it is a threat. Whoa, he swipes whoa, 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 at them, whoa, whoa. trying to appear big. <laughs> okay, okay. He spits and hisses. All right, you hold on to his neck. They grab him and hold him, okay, hold him and still. there's a pinch in his leg. Sorry, buddy. And he's woozy. Uh, no, he cries, okay. It's okay. and they whisper nice things to him. You're gonna be all right, bud. He falls asleep. We'll take care of you. He wakes up in the box. The smell of the car and the towel from home are familiar. He can smell the cream that's been put over his wound. He goes to lick it off, but he can't turn his head enough. Something is around his neck. His eyes, still unfocused, can only see white. Rico groans. He knows what this is. Otter had one on his neck when he came home, smelling different missing his testicles. The cone kept him from licking himself. Rico didn't have testicles. Or if he had, he didn't remember them. It's okay, Rico. We'll get you home, little guy. When they get home, they bring him in quietly. Otter sniffs at the door of the box, but Domas takes him away by his collar. Lana sets the box down on the ground and opens its metal gate. He can't get out. The collar is too big, and that worries him. The rat, what's left of him, is through the door. How will he get it for Otter before it rots? There's a click, and the top of the box opens. Alana lifts him out carefully. Her hands are so loving. The air of the house is cold on his chin and neck. Too cold. He can feel the air on his skin. What did the man do to him? The cone around his head keeps him from licking his neck. His whiskers scrape its sides as he tries to put his head down. Rico has to pee. Did you leave the garage door open? I don't think I did. Oh, wait. <sighs> Yeah, when we had Rico in the towel, like, freaked out. Ugh, let's see what kind of a mess Otter made. While Tomas and Alana inspect the garage, Rico carefully makes his way to his litter box. The chest freezer is pushed out from behind the wall. He sniffs the air. He can't smell the rat's body. Otter standing in the doorway leading to the kitchen. 
His eyes study Rico, and he tilts his head to the side. He sits and puts his paw out into the air and waves it at Rico like a kitten batting at strings. No. Otter wants Rico to come to him. Rico finishes and walks up to the dog. His breath is foul, but no more than usual. Did he eat what was left? Or did something come and retrieve it? With the people cleaning up the garage and complaining about the blood, Rico realizes that sleeping under the table or on their bed may be hard to do with the collar on his neck. He makes his way to the couch and hops up with some effort. He teeters a bit on the edge of the couch and grips the cushion as he starts to fall. But something nudges him back up. He spins around, ready for another attack. It's Otter. He steps back, just out of Claw's reach, and pants. The dog circles and lays down in front of the couch, leaving Rico be. He's a good boy, Rico thinks. A good boy. Two days pass. While it's hard to get around, Rico gets used to the collar. It's not as large as Otter's was, and he can still walk, though not as quickly as before. The wound itches, but there's nothing he can do about it. Domas feeds him foul medicine, but follows it up with tuna fish. Alana carries him like a baby from room to room when she's not working, and Otter is quieter than normal. He has begun stacking toys around Rico as he sleeps. When the people are busy, Otter just lies down next to Rico, escorting him around the house. The house has started to smell normal. He finds, with some effort, he can squeeze through the pet door with the cone on. It's annoying, but he can at least pee on his own. He inspects the garage as best he can without catching his cone on anything. He finds the hole by the garage door. The rat had not a hole through the wooden doorway and then had pushed against the metal door. There was a dent where it had been shoved. The thing had been strong, but Rico was faster. He peers through the hole. Healthy him could get through if he wasn't wearing this thing. Doma should fix it. Alana could but Rico needs her lap and attention. She's softer. You okay, little man? Oh, really? Come here. He attempts to get her attention as she gets closer, walking in circles by the wall, trying to show her the hole. But she picks him up, not noticing the sunlight coming through it. She didn't understand him. It's frustrating. He spends the day in her office. Otter comes in with a stuffed red bear and puts it next to Rico. Later that night, Domas and Alana go upstairs, and Rico and Otter commandeer the living room. They drift off to sleep. Rico dreams of people whispering, the opening of cages, the squeal of rats, and the smell of incense. Words are chanted, bones break, flesh tears and re-knits. The rat's voice joins the peoples as they chant the same syllable. Rico wakes up from his sleep. He stands up, the collar tight and stifling. Otter makes a small, quiet bark. He confuses Rico. Otter isn't barking toward the kitchen. He's made that noise at Rico. Rico looks at him. Otter leans his head forward and taps the pillow. He nudges the cone, jarring Rico, who raises a paw to slap him. He nudges the cone again, and then taps the cushion. He does it two more times. Rico bows his head. Otter's teeth grip the collar behind Rico's ears. He hisses but Otter doesn't stop. The big dog chews, and the plastic collar begins to choke Rico. He finds it impossible to breathe. Otter's killing him. He's going to die. 
the collar is off. Otter has chewed through it. Rico rubs his head on his brother. Otter is a good boy. But then the sound from the garage begins again. Otter begins to growl. Rico is in no shape for a head-to-head -head fight. The dog is making too much noise before the hunt. Rico reaches out with a paw and pushes lightly on Otter's lips. The dog stops growling. Rico whips his tail and nudges his chin in the direction of the kitchen. He does his best to be quiet. Otter's nails, though, are loud, which Rico uses to his advantage. As Otter goes to the right around the butcher block, Rico goes left. Whatever comes into the kitchen will be surrounded. Otter is quiet, quieter than he has ever been. The sounds from the garage are familiar. This time, though, there are the sounds of two intruders. He knows that they will be coming in here. He knows that he can't fight one on his own, let alone two. But Rico has his otter. An otter is being clever. The first one comes in through the hole. It's quiet. Cautious. It peers around the darkness and sniffs. Otter lets out a sigh. The creature shrieks and stumbles back. But then Otter snores. The thing pauses and walks forward again, its green eyes searching the darkness. Rico stays still. The thing raises its right arm. In its tiny paw, it holds another of those sharpened bones. It chitters over its shoulder. The second creature answers from the garage. It hesitantly begins to make its way toward the snoring. Rico can smell its fear, sees the wet fur on its back standing straight up. Does it smell Rico? Rico hops up onto the butcher block. The surface is entirely bare, making his landing easy. He walks over to the ledge slowly. Looking over it, he sees Otter lying down on his belly. The rat is approaching the dog, bone dagger raised, but it can't see what Rico can. Otter's eyes are open. The rat is three steps away when Otter leaps to his feet and lunges forward. It narrowly escapes his jaws and falls onto its back. Before it can even turn over, Rico leaps. The snap of its neck as he lands on it is satisfying. His stitches feel tight. He sends his eyes on him and looks up through the pet door and sees the other rat, its jaws open. He crouches, ready to pounce if the monster attempts to make a move. It retreats back from the pet door, stumbling over things in the garage. Otter barks at the door and Rico hears the other rat escape. He runs over to the counter and jumps. He balances carefully around the kitchen sink to look outside. The rat stands in the driveway, out of breath and terrified. He can see the gleam of its eyes as it looks at him, so he stares back. He then begins to size up his prey. It's bigger than the other two. Half as long as Rico. That means the hole they made to come through, Rico could probably fit. He could give chase. If it's that scared, he could probably win. But to leave the house without Otter, it would be dangerous. What if the rat has another waiting outside for him? He hears Otter chewing, and he can smell the entrails of their fallen enemy. His stomach rumbles, but also feels uncomfortable. But the meat... The meat made Otter smart. The meat made Rico understand. Maybe more meat is needed. The rat is pacing in the driveway near Alana's car. It ducks behind one of her tires. Otter comes over, his head almost higher than the counter. He has the rat's head in his mouth. Otter spits it onto the counter, his tail wagging. He's giving it to Rico. Rico can see a shadow by the tire. The rat is waiting for him to leave the window. This is the second invasion in just days. Do they just keep waiting for them to come into the house? It's worked so far, but still, something must be done. Otter is looking at him, 
expectantly. So what do you think that Rico should do? Should he give chase? Or should he consume more of the meat? You can vote now at whicheverpath.com slash vote. Good Boys Episode 2 was written by Stephen and produced by Journey and Stephen. It featured Journey LaFond as the narrator, Jess Negron as Alana, Amarni Marquez Chavez as Tomas, John Henry Deontay as Otter, Kevin Franklin Bowie as Rico, Stephen LaFond as the vet tex. Foley was by Whichever Path and Audio Hero. The Whichever Path theme song was written and performed by Ryder. Additional music came from Epidemic Sound, From Dust by Andres Cantu, Spider Room by Ethan Sloan, Brain Copy Syntax Error by Oh the City, Save Us by Phoenix Tail, and Con Comma by Los Principes del Flam. Azul, also by Andres Cantu. You can find all of these songs on epidemicsound.com. We also want to thank McKenna Davis for joining our Patreon. For those of you who know, our Patreon has plenty of premium episodes, behind-the-scene content, and more. Go to patreon.com slash whicheverpath to learn more. That's it for this week. You have a week to vote. And after that, we'll bring you the results of your choices. Until next time, sleep with a clear consequence. Choose the path.